Hi, and welcome to our webinar with Atlantic Grouper. Um, for those that we haven't met before, my name is Nick. I'm the founder of CoTeam. Uh, and it's my absolute pleasure today to be joined by Maida Beroslavic um, from Atlantic Grouper. Thank you, one of our clients. Thank you for joining us, Maida. How are you going today? Hi, Nick. Hi, I'm great today. Thank you for <laughs> inviting me. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit around some of the some of the challenges you've been facing at Atlantic Grouper uh, and the way that you've overcome those challenges and some of the work that you've been doing for the last few years. Before we get into that, um, for many people watching today, they may never have actually heard of Atlantic Grouper before. So would you mind giving us just a really quick crash tour on sort of on who you are? Of course. Okay, first of all, I'm Maida. I'm working in central marketing of Atlantic Grupa and together with my colleague Neja Vodet from uh, People and Culture team, uh, we organize our internal marketing academy. And uh, your question about Atlantic Grupa, well, uh, we are one of the leading food and beverages company uh, in the Southeast Europe region. And with our own brands and together with our external partner, uh, we support uh, them with our uh, internal regional, uh, with our regional distribution system. So Atlantic Grupa is Croatian multinational company with uh, 10 firms representative offices uh, in five countries, uh, 16 production facilities. Uh, and we're also great at uh, shipping, delivering our products from 17 distribution centers to over 40 markets worldwide. Uh, we employ approximately uh, 5,200 people in total. So that is uh, Atlantic Grupa in, in numbers. Brilliant. So over 5,000 employees and 40 markets that you're servicing. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've been through some pretty explosive growth in the past decade yourself. Um, and with that, you know, obviously fast moving environment, lots of new acquisitions, lots of new brands being launched and things being tested. It's inevitable that there's going to be some pretty big challenges that you're facing. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit around sort of before we even get into how you solved the challenges, what you actually see those challenges as having been. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, our business uh, grew over the years. And some of that growth came from uh, acquisition and uh, entering new markets. So uh, we got a pretty fast, pretty complex organization. Uh, we organized with our production business, uh, that in, uh, with the production of beverages, coffee, savory spread, and so on. Uh, we got the distribution units uh, that are organized by countries. And we got uh, our corporate functions uh, that they are supporting our businesses. So what we have is uh, different markets, uh, more company in one market, different hierarchies in each company, different businesses. And the challenge overall, overall was uh, that um, education, uh, organization of education on markets uh, was based uh, oriented on uh, on the market or, or on the company itself that was uh, on the, that same market. So we got uh, people from HR that were responsible for uh, one country and developing one country uh, or marketing capability, for example, in one country. So we got um, different teams in in one country that were on different different level and uh, they were using different kind of education, and uh, that led us to the point that uh, there was uh, no synergy between the company, no database or maybe some starter kits for the um, uh, onboarding newcomers, the new employees uh, in the group, and uh, we lack of. Um, maybe unique methodology uh, that uh, we could learn together and also use in practice together. Mm. So it was a pretty complex issue to start with. Yeah, it sounds hugely complex. And I imagine as you start to acquire new teams in, maybe they're really good at one thing that other business units are not doing such a good exactly. job of and vice versa. They've got their own sort of skill gaps, uh, et cetera. So very fragmented sort of uh, learning and development uh, approach, um, and probably quite reactive, I guess. 
Um, of course, that's, you know, that's a huge challenge. Lots of companies I've worked with that are growing rapidly face similar challenges, um, particularly where there are acquisitions happening. Of course, the other big challenge, and I know we've spoken about this a lot, Maida, on the, the various programs we've worked on, is just the fact that when we talk about marketing, the pace of change is just exponential as well. You know, so coming from, you know, in the FMCG world, a very traditional approach to maybe using a lot of television and radio and point of sale to sell, um, actually customer needs are shifting, uh, marketing channels are shifting, competitive context is shifting. Uh, and I think the Seth Godin quote sums it up quite nicely. So if you're really just reacting to how things are now, it's almost like you need to be one step ahead of the market. Would you agree that's a fairly? Completely, completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit then understanding those challenges and, and their big challenges. Um, really, what was your solution to this? Well, first we have to had to answer a couple of questions. Uh, we have to check what capabilities uh, do we need uh, in our organization, uh, and when we define them, we, we need to check uh, where are we in the current uh, capability set, and uh, what are variations uh, that could be in some um, markets or geographically or maybe in some organization or some companies that are different. So uh, first we have to check our stat status and then uh, we have to, then what we needed to do is to uh, create job roles that we are missing and uh, redefine the existing one. We, we need to de uh, define those competence that we need. We need to measure where are we currently. And uh, what we found out from that measurement is that uh, we, we are very good at, in some areas uh, as total organization, as teams, and also as individuals, but we also found out where are our pain points and uh, knowledge gaps uh, that uh, we should really focus on. But what is mostly important also that from that uh, assessment was that we found out what we think we know, but actually we don't know it. So that means that uh, we might do things at the wrong way. We are not doing it right because we think we know. Mm. So that was just, and we, it took everything just uh, of, of those information to start uh, designing those uh, competence uh, center uh, to, to see what do we have to focus on for our next period. Yeah, I mean, it's such a big thing, I think. In, particularly in context of what we've been talking about already, but like, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Um, and often I see a lot of teams and, and, um, and organizations fall down in that because they think they know everything and they're not open enough to realizing that perhaps they actually don't. Uh, and I think doing this type of capability assessment is a really good first place to start, right? Because then it does start to reveal the gaps um, reveal you some strengths as well, of course, which is brilliant, but also starts to get you thinking about, well, maybe there's areas that we, we hadn't even considered in the first place. I think that's a very brave thing for, for, for companies to do. Once you identified those areas, um, and this is gonna sound like it was a very easy thing to do, but I know that it wasn't. You had this sort of idea to put everything, to centralize everything, uh, and you wanted to develop a fully fledged marketing academy. So tell me a little bit about that. Yes, so uh, what we have now is uh, um, we are now, uh, we have a marketing academy that is centralized. We have a single source of all learning material, all video recordings, articles, useful links, uh, presentation, everything that we do, we place it uh, on our uh, marketing academy portal. Uh, this portal is uh, open to entire organization and has a calendar of uh, next events. Uh, but uh, we, when every time we have we add new event, we target it to a specific role that that specific knowledge is uh, needed. But uh, just to repeat once again, so uh, everything is public. Uh, if anybody from the organization, no matter in what team or what role is he or she acting, uh, if 
if, if the participant is interested, he's more than welcome to join us uh, in our education in Marketing Academy. And uh, that is a, a great thing that we achieved over the years. So it took us time to build it. It took us time to collect all materials and to find the right um, method, right, right, right media to to have it. But uh, yeah, it's it's a great thing that everybody who is in Atlantic Group can join in and and just look around what's what's new. Yeah, I really love it. It's this one-stop shop where you've got yeah. e-learning, you've got resources, you've got articles, you've got um, events, you've got videos and presentations, um, and you're also building a community out of it, right? So asking people to contribute to that academy, um, which I think okay. is a really lovely, lovely piece. Um, of course, it looks brilliant and, and it's amazing and it's, it's taken many years for you to get it to this stage, but looking good is one thing. Um, I think what people watching this might be more interested to, to hear about, are, well, what actual results did this give to you? Like mm -hmm. what was tangibly, quantitatively, what, um, what have you managed to achieve with the Marketing Academy? Do you want to talk us through some of the numbers quickly? Of course. Well, we started with the Marketing Academy in 2015. Uh, then in, uh, we started in many areas at the same time, which was maybe first mistake and first learning that we corrected in 2017. Uh, after this uh, big assessment that we had, uh, we decided to uh, focus our areas uh, on the shopper marketing and digital marketing, where we had uh, major gaps in, uh, in our knowledge in, in, in the total organization. So that was the first thing that we need to uh, refocus from everything to uh, specific things that we need. And then uh, every year we build and we add something new that we find uh, that it was uh, needed from our marketeer or that uh, that was useful for their knowledge. Um, then I could say our uh, next milestone was in 2019. Uh, we tried uh, uh, over the years, we're always trying to find new things. We are experimenting, we test and learn is a big part of uh, our learning curve. And uh, in 2019, we introduced the uh, e-learning platform that was a um, self-motivated and self-organized uh, concept. And that was quite new in our organization and did not fit that for everybody. Uh, we first thought that it would be a great way to educate more people at the same time uh, with the same tools, but uh, it turned out that uh, not everybody were uh, everybody found it uh, very engaging or very interesting, or, or maybe they didn't engage it so much. It, it just didn't fit for everybody. So we were experimenting, we did that. We, uh, then we started to, to uh, use more focused uh, e-learning uh, education. And, uh, in 2020, 2021 was everything, of course, online. There, there was no other way. Uh, but then we also experimented with workshops online, with conference online, everything that we did, we have to do now in uh, digital space and it works okay. It worked okay. We found uh, that level of time and, um, and uh, material needed and uh, the topics that we should place at what timing. So it's not easy to sit on, uh, in front of the computer and watch the web conference, online conference. This, it's not the same as uh, sitting in public and having to breaks, having break coffee breaks and chat with, with others. So, uh, we also did have to find out what will be the perfect fit if we have uh, a lecture on some topic, how long should it be, how many people, how to interact. And yeah, and that was all part of that uh, learning curve. And uh, the point is we, uh, over the years, over the last three years, we uh, significantly, significantly increased our participant number. Um, and one reason was just for that, because we had so much variety. And the second reason was the, the one that I mentioned before, because it was open. You can join in at any time uh, from any department. You can be from accounting, but interested in digital marketing. Uh, you, are feel, you are free to join in. So 
uh, and it was great. Uh, it was great to see that people responded, and uh, we encourage very much uh, people from outside the, of their roles to uh, to find education of their interest in some other field. So we are we are very very lucky that so far we are succeeding in in that in that part. I love 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 this because I I often say that. Nowadays, marketing is not just the role of a marketing team. I think everyone in a business, to some degree, plays a pivotal part of that that customer journey, and I like you know try to re reorient the business so you are putting the customer at the center or the consumer at the center of things. So having this sort of open door policy, uh, and clearly very reflected in the numbers there, you know, sort of doubling growth year on year in, in terms of participation. I also love that, you know, like you said earlier, you, you started small. You realized you couldn't, you couldn't boil the ocean overnight. So instead you started just with two very specific topics where you'd seen in your capability audit that they were the weakest areas for you um, and, and therefore the, the biggest opportunity for growth and learned as you went. Of course, I work with loads and loads of different sort of, you know, HR and L&D teams. Um, and often when we talk about training and, and measuring the results of training, you know, participation and engagement is one thing. But for me, the two biggest metrics out there are, well, are the learners satisfied? Are they actually getting yeah. what they need? But even more crucially, and it's much more difficult to manage, to, to, to measure, is this actually making a difference in our business? You know, are we actually is getting it yes. uh, yeah, on the money? So let's talk about both those metrics quickly. So firstly, the sort of the customer or learner satisfaction. <laughs> Talk us through this chart. Yes, well, customer satisfaction index is um, a yearly measurement that our people and culture team uh, is performing every year. So um, this part, this uh, measurement that you see on chart is exclusively for learning and development areas. And uh, it shows growth also to uh, due to many opportunities that are out there. Uh, many opportunities for personal development and also uh, organized approach to learning overall. Uh, what they started uh, is uh, some kind of school principle um, in overall our learning uh, department. Uh, for example, every uh, major team deserves its own curriculum. For example, Marketing Academy is uh, one of it. The second one is a leadership lab. Uh, for our future leaders, so we, we, they, we have to learn, teach them how to be a future manager. So this is one part that we can also see, okay, we are doing it uh, successfully. This is on the overall uh, group level, but Marketing Academy is a huge part of uh, this, uh, this index. And um, other than that, uh, we used the digital maturity index as also one sort of a metric of our success uh, that we first um, used in uh, 2019 before our uh, major education program that uh, we were preparing for all of our uh, marketeers or all major brands in Atlantic Group. Uh, at that time, we had results uh, that was 1.3. Uh, it's not super great on the scale from one to four. Uh, it's in the emerging part, it's basically level two on that scale. Um, but uh, then uh, recently we repeated that uh, benchmark, the, the, that survey, and we scored a, a little better. It's uh, 1.7. What is our learning from this is that every brand that was included in this survey has improvement on most of the areas that were measured. And uh, other than that, uh, we were with every brand above the industry level, which was, which was very important for us. Mm. This also means that uh, we have uh, so much more to learn, so, much, uh, so many areas to figure out, to find out uh, how should we do it uh, and to, to perfect ourselves in that. But uh, I think this uh, slow steps and the growth uh, is something that is telling us that maybe we are doing things okay. Maybe we are selecting the right education and maybe it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. It does make a difference, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think for those not familiar with this, the digital maturity benchmark or the DMB, 
It is an initiative that was run by Google um, along with Boston Consulting Group uh, to measure how um, digitally proficient uh, a team or an organization is. Uh, and this might only look like a slightly incremental improvement, but it is actually quite a remarkable step up in two years. Um, even though you're still sitting in the emerging category of it, level two, like you said, just showing that this, all of this investment of, of money and time and resource is actually moving the bottom line. Um, and that's why I think it's a really good thing to continue to revisit this. Um, so you can, you can really see the impact of, of those training efforts. And we'll share the link to this actually, if you are working in marketing right now, similar thing, you're trying to build a marketing academy, I'll, I'll send you a link uh, after this webinar. Um, so you can actually access the tool for yourself as well. It's completely free. So in terms of, I mean, that's like amazing stuff to hear about what you've done. I guess, you know, people have probably come along today because they're wanting to know a little bit more about, well, what, what can you share with them? What's the pearls of wisdom? Um, what's important? Uh, if they're thinking about doing this or they feel that their L&D is fragmented or they're seeing these similar challenges, can we give them some advice? And we've sort of come up with sort of five tips we want to land with you. Um, so firstly, uh, we've said it a few times, Marty, you can talk on this, but really understand mm -hmm. the business needs. Yes. Yeah, well, this is the first step and the most important one. Uh, as I said, we uh, did this uh, huge assessment in 2017 that gave us so much insights that we're still using those insights uh, on where we are and where we should be and uh, what things do we need, now, what do we need to get there? Um, we are continually searching uh, different types of measuring to just to see uh, where where are our new gaps? What are uh, what are the new trends? And what do we now? What do we think we know and we don't know? That's also yeah. <laughs> important to remember that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it's a uh, it's a process that uh, should be going on uh, continuously. Yeah, but having those really firm again quantitative figures and and understanding what the business need is before you commence in any type of training, I think is just so paramount here. Yeah. The second piece of advice, and this is one that you um, mentioned already, but around this idea of like test and learn, of course it comes from the lean world. Yeah. You, can't, you can't change everything overnight. So tell me a little bit about your experiences here. Yeah, well, this is uh, exactly our case when uh, we tried to, to build everything at the same time every, uh, with every area of uh, marketing uh, development we started at the same time with uh, to the total population and that was the first mistake we, we had to uh, find out that uh, it's hard to engage people uh, in everything you need to really find uh, a perfect match for the teams for for more people uh, at the same place uh, and uh, we found out that the better way is if we have those focused area, if we know that this year we will maybe uh, dedicate totally for one area in particular, and a build, an, of course, we will build uh, different things at the same time, but we need to have uh, focus for what we do. And uh, of course, we made much mistakes, so many mistakes uh, in the process, and we will make mistakes more, but the uh, important things that we do not repeat our mistakes, but make new ones. And, and that's a good thing. I mean, yeah. that's, that's normal process. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely can't know it all. And I think that having that sort of growth mindset almost around like where you see a, a failure as a learning, a really crucial part to being successful here because you're not going to get it right every single time. Um, but when something does work, then you, of course, want to scale that quite quickly, right? Put resource into it, get more people through it. The third piece of advice, and I, I, I sort of wanted to add this one in because, again, based off the work that we've done together, um, but as much as you understand the business needs, almost like one side of a Venn diagram, you also have to understand the learner needs um, and really dialing up learner empathy. You know, I've never met anyone who says that they don't have enough work to do. You know, so training and development often comes in on top of everything that you already need to do is getting, getting your work done. Uh, so I think really, you know, interviewing stakeholders, really understanding where they're struggling, why they're struggling, how they feel about that functionally, but also from an emotional perspective, 
um, because they might not feel that they're empowered or they might not feel that they, they are a master of something. They might be concerned about what their peers think of them um, or their sort of social standing, but really trying to understand their needs, uh, I think can also uh, make sure that you're building programs that people actually want to do. <laughs> Uh, rather than just trying to force knowledge on them. We're not, we're not talking about compliance trading here. We're talking about upskilling. Uh, and for me, again, just to bring it back to some numbers, because I think it's really valuable. The, the one thing, the one metric I think best measures um, learner empathy is net promoter scores or NPS. Now, I know some people here probably hate NPS. Uh, it is sometimes a slightly abused metric. Um, but it is basically measuring whether someone would actively recommend the training to somebody else. Uh, so very difficult to score a high NPS. For those not familiar with it, uh, we're talking on a scale of from minus 100 to positive 100. So generally, the, anything that's over zero is over the halfway point. Um, but look at this for your results here, Maida. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is pretty incredible. Do you want to talk a little bit about this? Yes, well, uh, I have to say uh, our KPI is uh, to have uh, on the end of the year average uh, net promoter score of more than 55. So that's maybe below the total, uh, above the average uh, in the that is used uh, while using net promoter score, but it's something that we have as our KPI. And uh, this year, I can say, okay, this year will be the best year of <laughs> all. So far, we have uh, NPS uh, so far uh, at 80 points, which is uh, great, and uh, which gave us uh, great, great insights from our participants on the things, uh, if we are doing things in the right way. I mean, it's, uh, it's easy to have uh, education. It's easy to um, to send somebody on the conference or maybe invite some uh, trainer to present you something, but to have engaged people in those education is hard. And uh, also all those education that we are talking about uh, are not mandatory. Everything is, uh, uh, you can select your education that you need. We are, we are here to promote the one that we think for your role is the best and you, you need it for your further growth, but it's up to you. If you don't want it, <laughs> you don't have to use it. So this MPS uh, gave us uh, a great insight on that. Uh, so we can move on and uh, maybe next step for the NPS lovers is uh, NPS point three point oh, uh, as we found in one article that says that the future of NPS is um, they call it earned growth as a accounting based counterpart for a net promoted score uh, that will reinforce the effectiveness of NPS providing companies so organization clear data connection between customer needs, word of mouth, positive company culture, and business results. So we are kind of happy to uh, facing the future in the, that future NPS and have all that connected data for a uh, better understanding. Yeah, and that is a brilliant article, Maida. Why don't we will also share that as a resource after this, this course for people who maybe have gone a little bit off the idea of NPS scores. Um, or find them too simple or, or um, maybe not quite measuring the impact in the way that they would like. Um, the fourth piece of advice, uh, and I think, again, you can probably really talk about this, Maida, but centralise everything. <laughs> yeah, well, that is what we have now. Uh, we have Marketing Academy that works for every marketing and also sales team. Uh, but we keep in mind those different levels of needed education. Uh, but still always providing uh, the same knowledge to the whole organization. We also take care of our marketing communities and we foster experts on the similar roles. So what we have now is that uh, we still know that our organization is not on the same place at, at the same time. So we have teams that are maybe some experience in one part, but uh, not unexperienced in the in different part. And we take consider, we do consider uh, all those facts while uh, selecting a right education for, for our teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like it's one of those things that, you know, once everything is in a central place and people start to know that's where they go, 
then you start to change the behavior, right? Um, and you start getting into this more this self-serve thing where people are like, actually, I do want to know more about SEO or I do want to know more about customer journeys. I know where I should go and look um, for mm -hmm. this, setting some gold standards. And last but not least, and I think this is a really important one, um, and it sort of goes against a bit of who I am because obviously I run a training company. I make a living from selling training. Um, but actually, there is so much value in peer-to-peer -peer based learning. Um, so much more so even than sometimes more instructor-led learning. Uh, so this ability to foster a community um, and get people to teach each other skills. Yeah. Practically, how did you achieve that? Well, we started uh, with launching Marketing Academy. We also launched, uh, we call it Marketing Community. And uh, basically in our company, it is, it's, uh, it's a group of all marketeers and uh, all roles that are related to marketing, such as the trade marketing, account management from our distribution part. And uh, it's around uh, 250 people uh, overall, and those are our target group for all education that we do. Uh, but in this group, in those groups, there are specific roles that are uh, maybe have some knowledge that others need. And uh, what we also did in that marketing community, we create two sub-communities, digital marketing and shopper marketing communities with the experts from that part that work together on project. They, they go uh, together on education. They We always level up them and benchmark them in, uh, in uh, so teams are also multi motivated to be better than the other ones but uh, in a positive way and in a way that uh, we could use that uh, gain knowledge and knowledge sharing uh, in the company mm -hmm. so those those communities are something that are continue that we continuously uh, work on but hopefully there will be more sub communities uh, in our system Amazing. Yeah. And I think that that is really brilliant. You know, I, I think also lots of experience I've had is, you know, a training intervention where you work with an external party will only last for so long. You know, it'll be a flash in the pan. But these communities, these peer based communities we can help that knowledge live mm -hmm. on and people learn, um, you know, months, you know, years after that first training invention and, and support one another. Um, so for me, I think that's a really nice part of your academy that you've put together. So just really quickly in conclusion, thinking about, you know, this, again, you might be sitting here, there's lots of great information, but just some hints and tips if you're thinking that you want to, to approach any of this. But first things first, understand the business needs. Yeah. Know the destination before you start on the journey. Think about what is it that we really have to achieve here but also be open to the fact that you might not necessarily know where those gaps in the business are uh, and using some benchmarking with an external um, provider or, or looking at industry data can help you do that more effectively. Secondly, you're, you're not gonna build Rome overnight. So test and learn, be aware that sometimes things are not gonna work out, but that's perfectly good. That's, a, that's really good as well, because you know it doesn't work. As you said, Maida, it's okay to make mistakes as long as you don't keep making the same mistakes. Um, and as long as you're taking that on board and, and you're growing, you're becoming better. Developing learner empathy. You know, everyone is really stressed. Uh, people, lots of people are still working from home. There's very little work-life balance right now. Um, they don't really wanna be doing training in their personal time. Um, you need to really understand what's in it for them. What's gonna help them want um, to be a part of this, this, this program, what, yeah, what's going to help them socially, what's going to help them feel more confident. Centralize absolutely everything, even if it looks like a bit of a hodgepodge, just start putting it in one place, whether that's on your LMS, or it's on a Teams channel, um, or it's a specific, you know, um, SharePoint site or something that you've built, but really just trying to get people to go just to know that that's the place that they go. Um, and that's where everything needs to live. Uh, and last but not least, don't underestimate the value of fostering a community and this idea of peer-based learning, you know, encouraging uh, running train the trainer, so encouraging people to who are really good in one area to take on the role of a teacher for a bit and actually teach their peers. Uh, and that can have tremendous impact for, for very little cost, to be fair. So that's, um, thank you so much for sharing this with us, Maida. I guess I just want to ask you last but not least, what's next for Marketing Academy? 
Well, what we would like to do next is uh, to make another assessment uh, to, uh, to check where are we now, uh, to check where, do we sh where should we go uh, and uh, how, how can we get there. So basically, uh, after this uh, next measurement that I'm hoping we will perform, we will have to prioritize uh, what will be our next step, uh, what will be our next focus area. Uh, and with that, we have to update our cu curriculum uh, plan. We have to find uh, the perfect education for, uh, for our focus area and then launch the new academy. It will not be 2.0, it will be 5.0. <laughs> but it, it has to evolve. Yeah, I guess it just never sits still, right? This is this continuous thing. It's not like you're done and you walk away but actually you just need to keep applying this back, keep growing, keep building, keep learning. So exactly. um, for those who are watching live, we will share around a couple of resources afterwards. If you're watching this on a blog, uh, we'll, we'll share them underneath the video here for both that Google digital maturity benchmark, but also the HBR article that, that Maida spoke through. Um, Maida, I just wanna say a huge thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Uh, today. Um, some really interesting stuff uh, in there. We've only just scratched the surface of what's been a huge part of your life, huge project. Um, any closing words from your side? Thank you, Nick. It was uh, also a pleasure for me to, to be here and uh, share my experience. Hopefully somebody will find it useful. I'm absolutely certain they will, and I look forward to doing more work together in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Maida, and thank you, everyone. Who's thank you. Bye-bye. Bye for now.